Okay, um, welcome to Job, uh, Coffee with Job. We are now into the very last chapter, Job chapter 42, and it, after two weeks of rain, it has now turned sunny in Sydney. And thanks to those of you who asked, but do you know when you get on the news and you see the disasters, and there have been disasters, I mean, people have been very, very severely affected by this, and it's done billions of dollars worth of damage. But you only really see the bad stuff. Um, and a lot of us, uh, I was out west today and was able to travel. Um, um, but I mean, if we were affected by the rain in that degree, we're seven floors up, so we would be in trouble to be the end of the world. But these things can happen. And one of the things that we're doing when we look at Job is how we cope and deal with these kind of things. Now, as we come to the end, uh, today and tomorrow, we're gonna look at two absolutely key, key questions. Today, we're gonna look at who is God. And then tomorrow we're going to look at, who am I? Who are we? John Calvin once said that all the wisdom we need, we ever need to know, is to be found in knowing God and knowing ourselves. Now this is what Job does here. So I'm just going to read verses 1 to 3. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things for, too wonderful for me to know. Now, what Job's doing here is he's admitting his ignorance, having heard from God, he's admitting that he has overreached. And he himself is brought low because he sees the greatness of God. Now, we'll look at, at who am I tomorrow. But in terms of this, what do we get from how we understand God? I know that you can do all things. This speech finishes Job's dispute with God. You can do all things is not just saying that God is almighty, but that God has a purpose in what he does. And saying, I know that you can do all things. When we've experienced loss, when we've experienced suffering, knowing that God can do all things means that God works all things together for the good of those who love him. So there is a purpose. Secondly, he knows all things. Who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Job's suffering makes sense to God if it does not make sense to Job. And Job is learning to trust God. He has a new appreciation of the scope and the harmony of God's world, of which he is but a small part. To rest and even relax in God. I'm just thinking about the song for Sunday, which I'm going to do Psalm 62, My soul finds rest in God alone. Paul says this, Philippians 4 verse 12, I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether living in plenty or in want, whether well-fed or hungry, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. So God can do all things. God knows all things. God is in control. God is not like Aladdin in the genie and the lamp. He's, he's not like that genie, sorry, not Aladdin. He's not like the genie in Aladdin and the lamp because he's not at our beck and call. And I don't know who said this, but I thought it was really helpful. Knowing that God is in control keeps us from falling apart under the strain of events. God can do all things, God knows all things, God is in control, and then this. And this is such an important doctrine for us to grasp and lay hold of. He can do all things. Sorry, he is good. We have to learn not to question the goodness of God which implies, first of all, that we're more concerned about goodness than God, that man is kinder than God. But now Job is, he no longer does that. He's really at peace. It's a, another Psalm, Psalm 131, that expresses this beautifully. I, I think this is beautiful. Let me just find it. Psalm 131. My heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. But I have calmed and quietened myself. I'm like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. Israel, put your hope in the Lord both now and forevermore. God can do all things. God knows all things. God is in control. God is good. God is beyond our knowledge. We have, like Job, to confess to ignorance. Who is it? I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me. Job confesses presumption there as well. And then the last thing is this, 
God can do all things, God knows all things, God's in control, God is good, he's beyond our knowledge, yet he can be known and experienced. Look what he says. My eyes had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Verse 5. We'll come more onto that tomorrow. The personal experience of God transcends the suffering, the isolation, and the injustice. This is more than mere theory about God. I'd heard of you. This is him being able to speak with God, to meet with God. It's one of the great wonders of God's grace. It's why you and I can pray. It's how we can meet together in, in worship of God. It is something we can do even when we are conscious of our own failings and weakness. It humbles us when we meet with the living God, but it's also real and wonderful. Tomorrow, we'll look at who we are, but knowing who our God is, we praise him. See you tomorrow. Bye.